I'm here traveling in Sheridan, Wyoming, one of the most adventurous towns in all of Wyoming. Even though the town only has 18,000 people, so would you call it a city or a town? I'm not sure. And an elevation of 3,400 feet or 1,100 meters, this elevation is very tolerable, so when you come here, you don't get a booming headache or anything like that. But you can get a booming headache at the Mint Bar, the, one of the most famous Western bars in all of America. This bar is probably second to the Million Dollar Cowboy in Jackson Hole. Now, when you come to Sheridan, there are a lot of shopping options and adventure that I'll be able to share with you. The polo grounds, the famous museums, and a lot of interesting wealthy people from the East Coast used to come here, and some still do that have ranches out here. That's like, hey, Sheridan, what's the big deal? Yeah, it's super nice because it's temperate in the summer. It does get hot and relatively tolerable for Wyoming. It's not as cold as Jackson, but can be windier. It's this nice little urban setting in an otherwise plainsy area on the east side of the Bighorn Mountains. What I'm going to do is show you a little bit about Sheridan and share what it's like. One of the things I like about Sheridan with the big heavy diesel trucks driving by <laughs> is the public art. One of the nice things about Sheridan is all of the art on the street is always on display. Maybe the city changes it out, maybe they don't. But one of the best things about this is it's not as much an art gallery town as Jackson. And then I, you know, I'm talking about Jackson like it's a bad place. I love the place. I've spent ooh, probably 15 years living there on and off. But that's the thing here. It doesn't feel like, hey, this is some billionaire paradise where you got to go in and you got to check your American Express Platinum just to get in the door. So all the artwork I'm going to show you on the street is just for enjoyment. It makes it a really neat experience walking along the streets in Sheridan. So definitely check out the artwork. If you're really into that, it's a fun thing to see. One of the best parts about Sheridan is you can spend a lot of money on your sweetheart or even yourself if you want to. Places like On The Rocks Jewelry are an excellent option to come and get your coin on, whether you want your necklaces, diamond earring, you know, diamond rings, earrings, whatever you might do. There are options in this town. So people say, oh, I'm going to come to Wyoming and it's not civilized. Like, no, no, wrong. You have to understand that Sheridan is actually one of the most popular places for East Coast money to come and visit way back when in the early 1900s because it was accessible by train to come here. Other places like Jackson and Billings, they were harder to get to, Jackson especially. But Sheridan was highly accessible and it is shown in some of the ranches around here, including the polo grounds, that there is a lot of money. So don't think if you come to Sheridan and you wanna get some local bling on, there are definitely options for you. As with many popular cities, there's the Smith Alley Brewing, a brewing company of craft burgers and fine drinks. Definitely stop by and check that out. It's good for lunch and if it's open for dinner, go there as well. If you want a taste of the Old West, you can't go wrong with a Sheridan Wild Rodeo. This rodeo normally happens in the middle of July and it's attended by over 25,000 people. This event is advertised all over the region, not just adjacent towns like Powell and Buffalo, but instead it's advertised in Jackson, Cheyenne, South Dakota, all over the place because it's a huge, huge deal. Even though Cody, another town in Jackson, advertises itself as the rodeo capital of the world with the museum and everything there, the Sheridan Wild Rodeo, that is the thing to check out. It's a huge amount of fun, all the classic things in rodeo. So if you want to experience an Old West experience, to see riders showing off their skill, cow roping, all the fun things about a rodeo. You can't go wrong with a Sheridan Wild Rodeo. Check out online when you got your phone. Check it out, look up to see when the next event is and plan for it because it's such a big thing here. It can overwhelm the hotel. So just be mindful of, hey, if you come for that time, you didn't plan a hotel and you get wiped out, there are close towns like Buffalo and others in the area where you can go stay and then drive like 40 minutes. It's not a big deal. It's well worth the time. One of the fun parts about Sheridan is all the stores that feature Americana. All the different kits that you might want to take, whether you celebrate your 4th of July, 
your Labor Day, your Memorial Day, they have got it all. Some of these stores go fully crazy in the red, white, and blue, and that's just okay with me. One of the fun things about Sheridan are festivals like Celebrate the Arts. Visit artinsheridan.com slash CTA, Celebrate the Arts. This year it's on August 25th to 28th. If you really want to get some experience of what the art festivals are like, Sheridan is a great place to do it. Don't think artists don't have humor here. This piece called Gotcha by Mary Caracker is donated by the Sheridan Public Arts Committee in 2013. If you've never seen them do this, coyotes and foxes will literally scan on the snow here and they, their hearing is so good with his big ears they'll actually literally scan and then they leap and nosedive straight into the snow to get these mice and voles. Now I'm going to show you a close-up of the actual view of this fox because you got to see the close-up of what this mouse is looking like. And right, we're going to go over the coyotes back here and I've seen this happen and if you notice from the coyote's view, the mouse is small, but you come to the mouse, and what does the mouse say? Yeah, yeah, put up your fo put up your foxy coyote fist, buddy boy. He's ready for a fight. Now the chance of him making it probably not very good, because well, as you can see, the from the let me uh, this is actually really fun to film from the perspective of the coyote. Yeah, not looking good for this little guy, but consider that's just how they do it because the coyote has to eat. Thank goodness for local bookstores. Ye Old Book Nook is one shop that is still locally owned and operated compared to the mega behemoths where you get on your phone, you go click, 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 and all you do is stare at your phone some more. This type of shop actually has something for you. You actually get to talk to a person and get a real feel for what the experience is like. You'll have to apologize for the road noise because let me flip it around. It's starting to get busy here. So even though it's on a Sunday, <laughs> But one thing about this, I wanted to show you this. Let me turn this around. We have large print. Now, I actually do some work for a publishing company because I'm an author as well. Check out links below in the description of all my books. But one of the things that I do and I help my publishing company with is large print because folks with vision issues and people that struggle with seeing, large print is actually a big, big deal. So having a shop that actually have we have large print and I think they have it somewhere too. Yeah, on the signs here, I'll just show you around. But that large print is a really nice feature. It's like 16 point font and a six by nine book and it makes it much easier for people with sight challenges. And just when you're getting older, let's just admit it, it's all going to happen to us. So you can still enjoy reading with shops like this with large print. At Legacy Diamond and Gems, they have the Yogo Sapphires from Montana. Montana generates approximately one-third of all sapphires sold for jewelry quality in the world and the Yogo is the premium sapphire. Let me tell you, they are spendy. I bought some and whoo whoo coin. That's one thing I like about the Sheridan experience too. Besides the diesel trucks that always seem to show up exactly when I hit record, people are super, super nice here. Every time I've been filming or getting set up, people will slink down and, oh yeah, sorry. It's just such a different experience compared to some of the other places I've been in the big cities where everybody's like, ah, get out of the way, everything. Sheridan, Wyoming, generally everybody's Super nice Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota. If you want nice, these are places to come. Now, the crazy tourist spots, yeah, of course, they're a little bit much. But towns like this, it's such a nice thing. Like, actually, I have to apologize saying, no, 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 don't worry. If you get in my shot, I don't care. I'll just take another roll or take another picture. And then people are totally fine with that. But it's such a different experience with the welcome experience of Sheridan.
One of my favorite places to eat is the Cowboy Cafe. There's a cafe just like this with the same name and logo over in Dubois. Not Dubois, not Dubois, but Dubois. The Cowboy Cafe has very reasonable food that's super tasty. Now if you're into handling cattle and cows and sheep, if you don't know about King Saddlery, you should. King Saddlery is the place where you get your lariats, your ropes, your lines, your tack, I mean everything. I remember being on a ranch scene, let's see, actually, let me tilt the camera down here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember going down to Arizona and having a weekend of riding and roping and the cookie brought back cookie not like crumble cookie but the guy who cooks brought back a lariat from sheridan king saddlery here and he handed it to the ranch owner and they literally handed it like it was a rare china platter to the owner and the owner took it and he literally massaged us and man i'm going to take good care of this because these king saddlery lariats and ropes and supplies are the best there are you can literally tour i mean the building goes way way back here but you can literally tour their entire facility i mean i've never seen so many lariats and ropes and things but i'm not really a cow guy so all i do is eat them i don't grow them or have to handle them but boy this king saddlery plus the museum you've got to come here and check it out of course on sunday it's closed can't do that for you but boy just wander through check out their website I mean, it, it will absolutely blow you away. That's one thing too about being in Sheridan is you're right next to the Bighorns. Fly fishing is a huge, huge thing here. I remember being up in Bomber Mountain last week doing some filming and the number of cutthroat and the size of the cutthroat those guys are pulling out of that lake. Woo boy, I wanted my fly rod right there and then. The Flying H Polo Grounds, woohoo boy, check this out. The games, the sport of kings is in Sheridan. Really? You think, wow, people play polo in Sheridan? Oh boy. You go over to Jackson in the Melody Ranch area and the owner of Melody Ranch brings his friends literally from all around the planet. This is a spindy type sport. So they've got from July 9th all the way to August 22nd or 27th this year of all the different activities in polo. So if the uh, blue collar thing isn't quite your thing, but you want to see the riders chase the ball with their, <laughs> with their horses around the field on the match field, boy, the polo grounds at Sheridan, pretty sweet. Thank you for watching this episode on Sheridan, Wyoming, one of the big little city towns in Wyoming. A small town of 18,000 people, it has many more accessible options than Jackson and it is not nearly as crushed as Jackson. It doesn't get the four million people coming through here. So if you're traveling between Mount Rushmore and Yellowstone and on some big road trip, you definitely want to stop by Sheridan for all the different things that I've shown you, plus whatever you find when you look online, check out your phone. Sheridan is well worthwhile. Plus, other than a few of the expensive places, the food is way more reasonable here than a lot of tourist destinations, which makes it much more tolerable, and the hotel and lodging options are a lot cheaper than some of the big attractions in the western part of America. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out links below in the description to all my books and including my show Antarctic Tears. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can get more info like this.